All right, so in this problem, we have that at a sand and gravel plant, sand is falling off the conveyor and onto a conical pile at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. The diameter of the base of the cone is approximately three times the altitude. And the question is, at what rate is the height of the pile changing when the pile is 15 feet high? Here's the formula for the volume of a cone. So let's start off by drawing just a sketch of what this may look like. So the cone. The base. The base is supposed to be uh, three times as wide as that height. So we'll say this is the value from here to here. That's call that D. That's the length. Of, that's the length of the diameter of the base. And then from here to here, that's the. That's the height of the of the pile or the altitude, but we'll just say we'll just go and mark it as h and height. And so um let's look at what we're given. We're given that the rate of change in the pile to so the volume of the pile is 10 cubic feet per minute. So what, what this is saying is that the so the change in volume of the pile with respect to time is 10 feet cubed per minute. Given that, we want to find at what rate is the height of the pile changing when the pile is 15 feet high. So the question is, or the goal is to find the change in heights of dh with respect to time dh over dt when h equals 15. Now some other information we're given, we're given the diameter of the base is approximately three times the altitude. So again, with altitude, just think of the height of this cone. So d is the diameter of the base, you can say d is three times h. Okay, so we're also given the equation for the volume. Volume of the cone is one third by r squared times the height. So you want to think of how you can um, make this into uh, an equation that you can differentiate and solve for dh dt. Now um, let's look at the equation for the volume here. We have you know you have R for you know the radius of the base and H for the height of the cone. So um, let's let's change diameter to be in terms of radius since we don't have any diameter in here. So remember, diameter is two times the length of the radius. The radius is just in half the diameter, so from here to here would be the radius. So that would mean that D is two times R, or R is just one half. The diameter one half d. So right, rewriting this, we can then say that one half, or we can say that r or one half d is equal to this divided by one half. So let's make this one half d, and that means one half d is three halves times h. And then we can replace one half d with r, so the r is three halves h. The length of the radius is one and a half times the length of the height of the cone. Now, um, here again, we have now, we have values, we have a way to represent r in terms of height. So to make this even simpler, let's rewrite the radius in terms of height because um the less variables we have in our equation usually will make it simpler especially if if you know like what you're trying to find in this case is something in terms of height look we're trying to find anything in terms of radius we're not trying to find like drdt so let's replace r here with three halves times h so this then becomes this is the same as one third 
pi and r will be three halves h squared times h. And let's keep going. Let's let's make this a little cleaner. So that'll be three times the three squared nine over four two squared four. So nine on top. The volume is nine. Pi, and we have two times two, so four times three, so let's make that over 12. Nine half pi and h squared times h, so h cubed. Funny, simplifying, it, simplifying it even more, we, the volume is three fourths pi h cubed. So now we have a formula for volume just in terms of height. This is going to make our problem a little bit easier to work with. Now, what we want to do here now is differentiate this with respect to time. And then we're going to see that we're going to get dHdt in this equation. And then we solve for dHdt, and then we can get our answer. So let's, let's dif differentiate this whole thing with respect to time. Let me go from the start from this side. So dBdt will be equal to three fourths pi. We're three fourths pi. It's not, it's not a variable, or it's just a coefficient, it's just like a number. And then using the power rule to differentiate h cubed, you will get three h squared. And we're gonna use the chain rule, because remember h is a function of time as well. So we're gonna multiply that by dh dt. See, now we have dHdt in our equation. We have already the value of dv dt, which is told that it's 10. And then all we need to find is the value of h. And then we can actually just solve this equation for dHdt. It will just be an algebra problem. So um, we already have actually h. We already have it. I, 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 I didn't see it the first second, but this is, this is great. We already have h. And we have dbdt, so so we can go ahead and just start solving this. So um, we should write this as ten being equal to three fourths pi times three times fifteen squared. So three times fifteen squared will just be two twenty five. Dhdt. Um, so on top of nine, nine times two twenty-five over four. Let's do that. Two Over four times dHdt. You know this is equal to ten. Ten equals this. I'm just only doing a simplifying, and then the rest is just you can do four times ten. Forty over two twenty five over two thousand twenty five pi will be dHdt. Forty over two thousand twenty five pi. DHDT, and now let's just go ahead and let's approximate this. And we'll get the DHDT is about 0. 0.006287602. And we're going to have this in terms of feet per minute since, since height is a one dimensional. The final answer would be that DHDT approximately 0. 0.0062876027. And there you go.